You're back with us on the Sea Morning Show. Yes, what you see here being framed is the cover of a latest book from an Indonesian writer, Uli Siregar, and the title is Nyanyi Sunyi. Sunyi, yes. Exactly, because it's Wednesday, it's uh, time for some book recommendations. Cool, it's a book talk. So this story is about moving abroad and leaving your family, friends, and even your career. Well, it sounds scary for some people, for but some people, interesting yeah. it, for another people, not yeah. a person probably. <laughs> so uh, the book, Nyanyi Chisunyi, is a compilation of previously published essays yes. written by our guest today. Yes. Um, without further ado, welcome to uh, the author, journalist, and mother of three. Yeah. Uh, Uli Siregar, uh, she lives in uh, Arizona, United States of America. Good morning, Kak Uli. Happy International Women's Hi. Day, Uli. Hi. Happy <laughs> International Women's Day. Hi. Yeah. So um, we have your book cover here. Mm -hmm. uh, Congratulations, Suni. Uh, before we go, thank you so much. Before we go uh, with this book, uh, I would like to hear uh, from your perspective about women. Mm -hmm. Uh, in general. In what? <laughs> in general. Uh, women, <laughs> I think uh, my first impression about we, w women is we women are very strong. Mm. We are very resilient mm. and it to be strong. Mm. So uh, that's what the first thing I uh, I think about when I see women. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you so are empowering. you you helm a lot of things. You are an author. You are a journalist. You're also a mother of three. That's a lot of responsibilities and a lot of joy as well. And recently, congratulations! You published your book Nyanyi Suci, Nyanyi Suni. Suni right. So, what is this about? Yeah. I mean, tell us about Nyanyi Suni. I uh, the book is just uh, it's the uh, personal essay collection mm. that actually been published before mm. uh, mostly on the Jakarta Post there are some on Magdalene Koran Tempo uh, Femina Magazine mm -hmm. uh, then uh, we wrap it up and uh, I add some some stuff in it and to, to make it like whole yeah. uh, the book is the story of a woman who moves to America <laughs> to Love. Oh. <laughs> then at first she thought it's gonna be like a like a walk in the park is gonna be fantastic but then she found herself married pregnant have a baby in one year and everything is like scary yes <laughs> and very very difficult so this is not a success story yeah. this is more about a book about how a woman being lonely, being isolated, mm. uh, expected to be strong when you are actually want you actually want to cry to your mom and and thinking this is a this is the wrong decision to move. What what am I doing here? Mm. Something okay. like that. So it's wow. basically so, uh, a, a personal story that is based on your life. Is that it? Yes, this is a personal story. It, oh my God. it was. It was planned as a full memoir before, but then Beautiful. I didn't have a, I didn't have guts to to tell everything <laughs> right, because right. it's very intimate. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, I'm scared because uh, to write a personal story, you have to be honest. Yeah, yeah you exactly. cannot, you don't, you don't try to uh, to present yourself as something really good. Yeah, it's oh something God. that you really. Brilliant. Yeah. So that's your life story. It's Always. worse than all, basically. <laughs> exactly. And um, being vulnerable is, uh, yeah. I just, I just read the book recently. It's about being vulnerable. It's my Bernie Brown. Exactly. Oh. And um, this book, Nyanyi, Nyanyi Sunyi, when uh, someone feel lonely in a mm. big country, yeah. and Massive. I think when you wrote it, very honest. I think it can relate, uh, relate to everyone. Absolutely. Tap because... into everyone's heart. Of course, because nobody's perfect. Exactly. I mean, we are filled with warts and all, yeah. you know. And it's nice to to somewhat know that oh, we're not alone here. I mean, exactly. we're not we're not the only person who is struggling. We're not the only person who's experiencing yeah. this. And speaking of experiences, could you please um, pinch one essay, uh, Uli, uh, that pops to your mind that you've written before that you want to share with us from this book? Uh, uh, 
my favorite is about this uh, how I found out in America yeah. that my bra size is actually 34D. Oh, 34B. Okay. Interesting. Tell <laughs> you us know about why it. This became very because oh, in Indonesia, when I was I live in Indonesia, I tried to hide my boobs. Okay. Yes. Because we are, we are, oh, we are, we got a uh, sexual harass. Yeah, yes. like object. Yeah, people object try to touch us. You know? Yes. And yeah. then uh, people people can call us. And when you have the, I have uh, big boobs. Mm -hmm. So uh, be it, proud of it. it yeah. It feels like, <laughs> Yeah, people feel like that's like an invitation to harass me. It is yes. not. I, I it's like everyone has a I try to, right, have the right to do that. Yeah, right? I try to hide it. I wear something that will hide oh. my oh. my breast. Mm. So, but then when I go to America, when I live in America, I don't experience that anymore. Yeah. Uh, then I, I, I realize uh, when uh, I go to the store, uh, mm. the bra store, yeah. and then he's... Uh, and I said, I'm, I'm looking for this. Uh, do you have this size 34B? And yeah. the sales say, I don't think you're 34B. I think <laughs> you either C or B or maybe double B. I was like, cannot be. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's just, it's, in my time when I was young, I heard uh, anyone wearing 34D. No. Yeah. I think the bra just stopped at B. Or C. And already considered <laughs> oh my God! So oh. It's me, yeah. oh my God! That is so raw, <laughs> and we love it. Of that's course. So sweet. Yeah, so, that's, so that's what I said. So that's what the story about. So oh I God. said, and finally he, he helped me to to fit the, my bra, cool. and I finally put. Oh my God! I've been wearing the wrong bra oh. size for the, all this time. Oh my God! That is very I'm sad. I still support me. I know, but it's so relevant to so us women, of, of course. Especially one yeah. of the essays, right? Oh my God! It's 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 simple thing, but it's necessary. It's and it's relevant right. to us as well. Exactly. I remember the daily things that we wear. Exactly. Right? I remember Uli. Uh, <laughs> there is a, a, one of my best friends. Actually, she has a daughter, and she experienced the same. Uh, experience as you when she went to Germany mm -hmm. to buy bra with her mom and then uh, because it's very hard for her to get the right size yes. in Indonesia but when she was in Germany exactly the shop assistant was like no that's not your size let's get the right size for you and it's actually very important for women to for a woman to feel comfortable right. yes right? Mm. Uh, especially about our body of right? course indeed so, yes so Uli as an Indonesian living in the US mm -hmm. and you are um, a writer as well is, is there any difficulties in managing your, uh, your book distribution and promotion or so maybe you don't you, you didn't find any so, difficulties uh, I'm confident that my story uh, will be well received for the for the readers. And okay. just when it comes to distribution, I have mm, I, I don't know anything about it. Right. So, uh, but I'm pretty I'm pretty good at social media, and we live in the social <laughs> media era where I can yeah. the platform like uh, Twitter. I have like 50 uh, 50. Uh, 50,000 follower. I I can use Facebook. I can use Instagram. Mm -hmm. But that's why I have my publisher, which is Chantrik Pustaka. Yes. Who who is? I am very thankful that I chose the publisher, the small publisher. We work really well, and uh, because the small publisher, we only put the book for sale on uh, uh, e-commerce. Okay. We don't put it in the major uh, bookstore because, mm. uh, you know, it will take so much of the uh, of the percentage of the profit. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to distribution, maybe that's also my, uh, I just like, I don't know. <laughs> Please help me with that. And I'm very thankful that you guys uh, invited me, you ladies invited oh, me. So, of uh, course. Uh, I just, one, I just wanna, I, I just wanna give my best work to yeah. use, but when it comes to distribution, I'm trying my best to use any platforms that I have, and uh, soon I will be going to Indonesia for the book launch in May. <gasps> nice. So I'll be, I'm very, very, very excited that I'm gonna meet my readers. Ooh. Where, where that will there be a book signing and you know like reading, like a, yes. a little reading? Yes, <gasps> there will be. Uh, 
our name. We're still working on the venue and all. Oh so my wow, gosh, looking how forward. Forward. exciting. Oh. Here we go. Super, yes. super happy. We cannot wait. I mean, yeah. and, and yes, it is indeed, uh, you are absolutely right, Uli, um, working with Chantrik because your book cover is one of the best book covers I've ever seen. And it's actually very, very I know, important, I right? Love it. I love right? It. Yeah, I love the book cover. It's, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful. Really it's wonderful and it's beautiful. So this is a compilation of your essays over the years, right? Why did you decide that, okay, I think the time is now for me to compile it in a book? Why Why now? So, yeah, so uh, like uh, two years ago, uh, mm. we moved to, uh, like I said, we moved, there's in, in in, in the book, I also told the story. We moved to uh, to New York to Cornell uh, because my husband got a job at Cornell University. So we moved to Itaca, a small town. That's and then uh, for town. the first month, yeah, very, very beautiful. For the first month, we live in a renting house mm -hmm. that uh, where a Pearl S. Bach used to live. <gasps> no. You know, the, the open, yeah. Oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> what? I know. It's it's a house. It's really like a small wow. house uh, surrounded by trees. It's so beautiful. Oh my God. And you can hear the water really, uh, like a little creek. And you can oh. hear the water like a white noise, white noise in the, at, at night. Yes. Uh, it's so beautiful. I, 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 I wrote it on my book. So oh, when, I, when I was there and I, I lived there and I said, you know what, this is a this is a woman writer, yes. accomplice, a Nobel, uh, you know, a Nobel uh, winner writer. Yeah. And then I should, I have to write something about oh, this. Oh my goodness. I've, I've been wanting to uh, to publish a book under my own name. Yeah. I, I mean, I had three books before this, but it's like uh, anthology, mm. uh, compilation with other people, but yeah. I haven't have any of uh, my own name so i said i have to do this i have to, to make this something out of it otherwise why do i live in here yes. living in the legendary uh, writer but didn't get out of didn't get anything out of it but then it still take me it still took me two years to yeah. put everything together and i found this uh, wonderful editor must now feel thank you so much <laughs> and then we create he curated and he helped me and uh, most of the story was read originally written in english so mm -hmm, right. uh, i also uh, for, uh to uh, mas lupfi who who who, who uh, um, uh, translated some of this so, uh, it took me two years to work with the right editor and then uh yeah and this is the final uh the final is that thank you for last back? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's an amazing. For giving me like a motivation. I don't was, I'm, I'm, I'm like a prof, professional procrastinator. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> well, like, aren't we all? Yes. Aren't we all, Lily? You're not alone totally. <laughs> oh my I God, know. especially women. There's a lot, 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 lot of excuses and distractions. Exactly. We say it's a distraction. And <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of being a woman, earlier, earlier we also spoke to Samira Shihab, right? She's yeah. a, this woman entrepreneur. She is very high achieving like you, but also at the same time, she says, you know what guys, I actually have this thing called the imposter syndrome. So basically, despite all of her wonderful achievements, she, she sometimes still questions herself whether she deserves to be in that position or not. Yeah. Now, maybe as a writer, one of the things uh, that manifest from imposter syndrome is the writer's block, right? Mm -hmm. At least that's what I experience when I want to write something. I always feel like, oh, am I good enough to write? Am I experienced enough to write about this, right? So do you or have you experienced writer's block and how do you as a woman conquer this until, you know, it's like an, until you write an essay <laughs> or you produce a book? So, uh uh, in my book, I also write why writing is very important for me. Mm. So I experienced uh, postpartum depression oh, after so I had sorry. my twin babies. Right. Uh, and doctor put me on antidepressant. But as an Indonesia, I'm not used to medicine like that. Yes. And the stigma that, you know, mm, yeah. uh, you crazy or something. So I tried to get through a bit. Mm. Uh, and writing, writing really saved me. Really? Writing really saved me. So. I cannot imagine I, if I didn't write. When I moved to America, it's really hard for me because I was a journalist. Yeah. And then I had to be a housewife, a mom. Yeah. Oh. It's really like a drastic change. Yeah. 
I feel like nothing. Mm. I feel like I'm just a piece of meat. Like it was very sad for me, and I I start to I started to resent my husband for it, right. even though it's not his fault. Right. So uh, I hated him right. for 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 making me fall in love, for oh. making me move here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to lose everything, you know, that I yeah. build, that I have to rebuild my 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 life here. I tried a new career. Mm. Uh, I I I I I thought uh, I, I was a professor, a jump professor at Arizona State University, mm. but, but I, I didn't like the job. <laughs> I wanted to be journalist, but it it wasn't feasible because I have three young kids yeah. and I don't have any assistant to run the, to run the household yeah. uh, beside my husband who is, who is very wonderful. Yeah. So I, I found the outlet writing. Mm. I kept writing. Mm. I published my writing uh, in, um, in Indonesia media. Uh, it, it's been countless of writing. Uh, so uh, writer block, of course it happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's why this is now <laughs> instead of five years ago but uh, how do i overcome it to remind myself that writing is my arsenal yeah. that that's my weapon mm. that uh I, that's that's how i voice my concern mm. uh, wow. my issue yeah. uh, to help women too because i'm all about women issue wow. so uh that's how i that i i owe it to myself i owe it to women that uh, because I have that I have the gift I have I'm privileged yeah so I have the outlet to, to publish my writing if I don't use that you wow, know wow that is such a power yeah that is such a yeah, power yeah that's a power that of I have course. so amazing being being a privileged woman you will have yeah. to use it right yeah absolutely oh my god amazing so <laughs> um on this very special day especially for a woman on this international women's day what is your uh, hope for all women uh, writers out there, especially uh, young woman writers? Uh, I hope uh, female writers uh, we can voice their story without, without being afraid mm. that they would see as a whiny or offensive mm. or, uh, you know, being afraid of what, what, what the society Thing about that, their story legit. Their story is not for uh, to undermine. Uh, we have a lot of female writers on on Twitter. I fr I friend with a lot of uh, women who are excellent writers, mm. very young, like mm. Olive Hardy, twenty years. Dewi Karisma. They are young women with such talent, and I'm actually envious with them because they start very early. Yeah. So I want them to be able to write their story without being afraid, uh, to feel free to, to share their story, to voice uh, their whatever they have in mind. So uh, that's what I really, uh, I really hope for a female writer. Wow, that is very powerful. <laughs> so basically, I got this kind of inspiration from Uli. So basically, every woman has the privilege to do everything they love, to do anything that uh, they can. So have a have a, uh, that as a power, so we can resonate to other. Absolutely. Inspiring, not just inspiring, but call to action is really important. Absolutely, and also women supporting women is yeah. also very important. Thank you so much, Uli Siregar. You've been an inspiration. Hi, thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful. Amazing. Thank you for having me. Oh, happy Yay. International Women's Day once more, and hopefully, we will happy see you in May. Day. I'll see you. <laughs> bye bye. Wow. <laughs> see the beauty of empowering women, women Indeed. supporting women is I very, know. is very beautiful. It is very beautiful. It's 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 something that is very close to us, mm. but sometimes we forget and yeah. we neglect that we need that kind of. Support. Of course, and you know, this is actually one of my supporters, Ooh, well, Shafira. <laughs> <laughs> and those of you who want to catch Uli Siregar in Indonesia in May really soon for a book reading, for a book signing, you can definitely find the information on her Twitter. You can find her at She Knows Honey. This is Uli Siregar's Twitter, at She Knows Honey. There you go. You want to...